Perfect. Thanks, Adriana, and thanks, everybody, for uh, joining the WebEx today. Um, so as Adriana mentioned, I'm going to be talking about just introducing you to, to Blackline. And, and from an agenda perspective, I don't like oversliding folks to death, but this is, this is a definitely a kind of a slide-heavy uh, presentation um, really around, you know, from an agenda perspective, just go over um, what the current challenges are for uh, clients of all sizes around the close process. Um, I have a, a case study on how uh, Blackline, how we're working with uh, clients in the mid-market, really just an introduction to uh, modern finance and then what uh, some of the reasons, the seven reasons uh, why you should partner with uh, Blackline um, as well as a Blackline overview. And then at the end of this, we'll do Q&A. So this isn't going to be a demonstration, folks. Um, if you are interested in seeing a demo of, of our solution following, uh, please let me know and we can certainly uh, set that up. But just to give you a, a quick background about myself. Um, so my name is David Stewart. I'm uh, one of Blackline's channel account managers. And I've been uh, developing and managing channel programs in the finance and technology space for uh, over 12 years now. So prior to joining Blackline, um, I was a, a, a channel account manager within uh, Infor. So after seeing how really ERP resellers could benefit from Blackline solutions, I joined, um, I joined Blackline about a year ago and um, really been uh, tasked on developing our partner channel program, specifically in North America. So, you know, really with my understanding of, of ERP resellers, um, you know, I'm helping Blackline's current partners achieve success by helping them provide and deliver finance transformation for, for their clients. So just a little bit, bit, a bit of background about myself. Um, I'm actually, I don't know if you can hear my accent, I'm based in Vancouver, Canada. I don't feel like I have an accent, but I'm, I'm sure I do. Um, so I wanted to just talk about, before we get into um, our solution really want to take a step back. You know, you know, why is the financial close um, such a headache for organizations? So let's. Just, I want to walk through this this simple example um, of what's you know what what is the close process. So data is pulled. What happens essentially is data is pulled from an ERP system, whether we're talking about GP, Sage, NetSuite, whatever it is. It's used to create adjustments and accruals. It's passed around, as you can see here, from preparers to uh, approvers to senior management and it can be stored electronically. A lot of times it's, it's, it's printed out and stored physically as well. And then senior management audit wants to ensure control and completeness around the close. That's, you know, uh, progress is really a lot of times it's tracked in Excel spreadsheets, right? And then accountants might have, a lot of times you see here, um, accountants might have late journal entries um, that require additional approval. And then once it's done, internal and external auditors want to review and, and validate those key controls. So this just creates this tangled process that occurs outside of the company's ERP systems. Um, and typically this is done, again, this is done within spreadsheets. Um, whether you're a large, I mean, enterprise organizations, a lot of times it's done within spreadsheets and definitely for um, the SMB space is done within spreadsheets. Um, so, you know, really what are the common challenges um, around the close? It's just inefficiencies, um, need for timeliness, timeliness. You know, the question, um, when I'm at these conferences, talking to these, these organizations, um, how long does it take you to do the close? A lot of them, they might say, you know, most of the time it takes, you know, five to 10 days, but a lot of times they may say three days to close, but then the question is, how long does it take you to do your count recs? And most of them are going to say, well, you know, it'll, it'll be at least 10 days to, to actually do the account reconciliations, which they do after the close. So they do a soft close and then do the account reconciliations. Um, other common challenges is just, it's a manual process. It's all done in Excel. There's really just a lack of standardized um, within the close, um, lack of training, increased demands, you know, paper-based. These are all just, just these um, examples of and challenges around um, around the close process. So, what are these kind of increasing demands to make really matters worse? There are these demands on accounting as requirements continue to grow, grow, and then roles get really more complex. Um, we all know that we live in this world where we want this information now, so how do we balance all of that? So there's these operational complexities. I mean, I'm sure you folks on this call know this. There's consolidation, there's mergers activity, and then with that expectation is to do more with less, and there's just increasing demands put on accounting professionals. There's compliance cre creep, so, you know, it seems like each year there's more compliance rules and complex taxes, um, you know, increase the burden on the, the uh, finance and accounting group, whether it's, you know, SOX or COSA rules or VAT rules, whatever it is, um, there's shift to the real time. So really management wants to know their numbers in real time. There's just that pressure to drive down the number of days to close. And then finally, this expectation of 
accuracy. So the information provided by the FNA team must be accurate and, it, and it's used it to uh, create strategic uh, business decisions. And so um, in the survey from APQC, uh, they found that, you know, how are accountants spending their time? Um, accountants, you know, are spending 50% of their time around really this grunt work um, of transaction processing and then following it split across controls, decision, and, and management support. So I would venture if you ask your clients, you know, again, how long does it take uh, take them to do the close. Most would say, you know, we did 10 days and there may be those ones that say three days, but um, a lot of them times they're going to be cleaning the recs um, following the close. And that's where that large, you know, grunt work comes into play. Um, and then as you can see here, you know, what is draining significant time and resources? Um, out of all these you know, processes, GL account reconciliations take up the most time. And then um, resources followed by kind of audit and intercompany uh, accounting. Um, and then reconciliations that the, that cause the biz, biz, uh, biggest headaches is is uh, is actually intercompany, and this is actually for mid market clients as well. Um, this this uh, um, this was a report by uh, Pulse Report that that created this. So really, the speed and accuracy of month end close is compromised by these multiple data sources. Your clients are used to pull data, so a lot of times it's not happening just from the ERP. They're pulling it from Sage, but they're going to be pulling it from their bank, from their credit card, from um, you know fixed assets, whatever it would be. So for them, it's necessary to leverage that data in order to gain the necessary assurances that accounts are in balance. So our research, you see here, uncovered that of all reconciliations intercompany are causing the biggest problem uh, problems um, even for the mid-market companies followed by bank recons fixed assets and then inventory transactions as well and so the feeling really among financial executives falls in line with the old adage you know if it ain't broke don't fix it but yet you know instead of spending spending time on forecasting or benchmarking or understanding the drivers of the reports analytics finance execs are really spending most of their time trying to see that the grunt work gets done you know so finance department staffs are you know they're really the soldiers on the front lines and they work through those those weekends on average about five times per year so as you can see here this is another example from Robert Half in, in conjunction with the uh, Finance Executives Research Foundations. They conducted a benchmark study in which 80% of those finance and accounting departments surveyed were small to medium-sized enterprises. So um, they were ranging from 25 million all the way up to 500 million. One of the key findings they found was that 54% 54 of companies in the US, 55% in Canada were still doing account reconciliations manually. And these are, you know, these mid-market clients can't just, you know, throw more resources on the account rec process like, you know, some of these large enterprise clients can. They already have a lean finance team. So yet, you know, although most of finance resources are spent on the reconciliation process, Fantana Research found that 90% of finance executives believe they should take a more strategic role. And that's really where um, Blackline comes in. Um, so Blackline, what we're trying to do is um, Blackline trying to modern finance, and it's really a new approach to finance. So modern finance, I'm sure you've heard that word all the time, um, financial transformation, but modern finance really is a journey that's yielding continuous improvement in the quality, in the accuracy, and the efficiency around accounting operations by really embedding process standardization, technical automation, and then constant analysis. The Office of Finance really advances beyond transactional accounting execution and really becomes that strategic partner to their business, um, which is what the finance executives really want and they're not gaining yet. So um, these are th really the three main value drivers that our clients, uh, for our clients that are really modernizing the way that finance works. So if we can bring automation to the process, uh, we can increase efficiencies and allow people to work smarter, not harder. In the case of really efficiency improvements, um, Blackline, we built out these auto certification rules where our clients can automate and they do automate anywhere between 35 to 85 percent of their balance sheet account reconciliations. So they just manage the exceptions versus what they're doing right now, what your clients are doing right now if they're using Excel, um, and most of them as you see here are, um, they're spending time, you know, days just taking and tying all of their accounts instead of managing exceptions. So this is really the biggest efficiency improvement for our clients. Um, another 
value driver is really built in controls that can decrease risk. So whether you work with a private organization, a public company, or, or a, definitely an organization that's planning to go public, you know, pre-IPO organization, um, they need to have controls. They need to enforce controls around the close, or just a lot of them want to standardize their audit process for internal and external auditors. Um, Blackline helps to do that. And then lastly, is providing visibility to finance and, uh, and the accounting process. So we've heard before kind of time and time again, um, the issue is the CFO doesn't know where the account rec is in the process. So um, we give that visibility um, through different solutions, which we'll, we'll talk about uh, later today. And then I did want to mention, you know, really data is the foundation of, of uh, a black line. We take data from from ERPs, in this case you see it's Microsoft Dynamics GP, but we're ERP agnostic, so whether it's Sage or NetSuite or Epicor or Infor, whatever it is, uh, we pull that data from the ERP, from the GL subledgers, cash management tools, bank data, credit card data, Excel even, um, really any source system that is appropriate for what we're trying to accomplish and then you can help your customers really connect all those data sources and then automate the task needed to perform the financial close. So that information is, is available for the accountants, for the preparers and reviewers, uh, for management and even auditors. So we have this workflow and then um, separation of, of duties as well that, they, that uh, the clients can set up. And because it's role-based, your clients control who has access to what information. Um, I did want to talk about just a kind of an example of a client that before was was um, really doing a lot of manual work when it came to the close. So one example of this is, um, and then they basically, it's Gain Capital. So they, Gain Capital is a U.S.-based provider of online trading services. They're headquartered in, in uh, New Jersey. They run Blackline with their Dynamics Great Plains um, ERP. Um, and as you can see here, um, really the challenges, the main challenge for them was there's this heavy reliance on spreadsheets and paper. So there was this lack of standardization among their accounting teams and they had multiple accounting teams in different areas. Um, too much paper documentation, there was lack of confidence in their financials. Um, there was poor, in their case, they had poor audit trail for internal and external auditors. Um, and with that, there was increased um, increased costs on the audit side. There was no visibility into the status of their of their global teams and where the account recs were. And then finally, there was because of this, really, there was this extended financial close. Um, what they wanted to achieve, so their desired outcomes and improvements is they wanted to have just process improvement. So they wanted to have one standard process when it came to their close and their account reconciliation. They wanted to have, you know, they needed obviously integration with their with their Great Plains and then um, as they're growing they wanted to have a scalable solution that others within their organization could use. And then they needed really confidence in the financials was 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 you know, was an outcome that they needed. So they wanted to have completed reconciliations, um, you know, within less than a week. They're a public company, so they needed to have financial statement integrity. The last thing they want to do is have a, uh, do a misstatement or a restatement, obviously, um, for public organizations or even pre-IPO organizations. That's, that's definitely big. It's around controls. And then they wanted to have more informed decision making. And then a big one actually for them was a reduction in paper costs. So if you're a public organization, maybe, you know, private companies got to have seven years of your, your financials and account recs. Um, and a lot of them are, you know, a lot of folks, and you can ask this question, a lot of them are printing it out and signing off the account rec. So in this case, everything's documented and stored uh, within Blackline. So that was actually a big uh, cost savings for them. Um, and then finally, they, the outcome or desired outcome was having a user-friendly system that their auditors can, could access as well. So what were the requirements? You know, what do they, you know, what do they need for the desired outcome? Well, one was they wanted and they needed really a single solution of record that provides this unified workflow across processes. Um, they needed easy integrations with both their Great Plains and then they are acquiring some other ERPs as well as um, pulling in um, their bank data um, from a transaction standpoint. They wanted to have a global repository for their documents and supporting assets for the account recs. Um, and then finally, they needed real-time reporting and then embedded uh, controls. And so, you know, kind of where they are, to, where are they today? So all their reconciliations 
are run through Blackline globally. So they have that integration with GP and and their other ERPs. It's an Infor um, Sun Systems product. Um, all their auditors have access to this user-friendly repository, and and again, they um, give access uh, only what they want to give access to their to their auditors. And then um, right now, so what they implemented was the account rec and, and matching solution. They're actually looking to implement our uh, Blackline products, uh, tra our, our task management solution, uh, which we'll go into a little bit later uh, today. But um, that was just one example of an organization that um, really modernized their finance um, uh, uh, through Blackline. So with that, I wanted to kind of just talk through our platform and our different solution set. So really, the Blackline finance controls and automation platform provides this central workspace for um, our users to modernize the way finance wants to work. So our technology really is we're the only unified cloud platform built specifically for the financial close. So we have this comprehensive security, um, you know, SS um, AE security, ISO 2700 certification. So data encryption, all, what this all means is we protect um, your financial data, your client's financial data. Um, so we do work with some very large enterprise organizations and with these um, and financial institutions and um, these organizations obviously needed to have, uh, you know, controls um, and they needed to have security, comprehensive security. So we've uh, we built that out. Um, the other bookend you see here is it's how we get the data out of the system. And that can happen through uh, standard reports, ones you create yourself, there's grids, there's dashboards, and then you can see your sandwich within the middle is a number of automation pieces, whether it's uh, workflow rules for uh, matching transactions, auto certification rules, but really the technology serves as this kind of flexible base layer for, for your clients to get the most out of Blackline. And then what sits on top of that are our product lines. So we have really um, seven main products, which we'll uh, I'll kind of talk through a little bit today. Again, we're not going to be showing you a demonstration, but um, if anybody's interested, we can certainly do that uh, following. But we have seven main products within the platform. There, one thing to note is they were not um, acquired. Um, we were built from the ground up, so we uh, it really was built from from 2001 and onwards when we um, when we came into uh, came into business. So, um, and then it's not through acquisition. So they have this really consistent user interface, making it easy for our end users. So think of Microsoft Office. So wh whether it's Word, Excel, etc., they have this consistent layout, and it's very important from a from an efficiency standpoint. So we have our transaction matching engine, which allows our clients to reconcile large volumes of data at the transaction level. So it matches data against one one another um, so, you, so your clients can focus on the exception. So it can be thousands of transactions um, or it can be millions of transactions monthly. So those exceptions can be pushed to the month end reconciliation. Um, we have our account reconciliation solution which essentially what it does, it eliminates spreadsheets and increases efficiencies, controls and visibility around the close. Um, we have our consolidation integrity manager. Um, it, we are not a consolidation engine, you know, so we're not a Hyperion or a Cognos or, or that type of solution, but we do have our consolidation integrity manager, which really what it does, it automates this tedious system to system rec process. Uh, if um, so it's, it's important. It basically, it automates. Uh, yeah, it, it goes to the, uh, this tedious system to system rec process. So it's just important because it allows you to reconcile at the GL, the GL balances for multiple ERPs. Um, we have our daily reconciliation solution as well, which enables continuing uh, continual monitoring of accounts for accuracy throughout the accounting period by by automating the frequent this labor intensive reconciliation. So whether it's bank reconciliations, whether it's credit card reconciliation, um, inventory uh, lockbox, whatever it may be, um, that's what our daily recs uh, does for our clients. We have a journal entry solution as well. So just let's your clients create manual journals within Blackline that has the validation and it can actually link back to the reconciliation. So that's the only module that actually pushes back um, or can potentially push back to the general ledger. With our other solution sets here, it's really just pulling information um, from your different sources. Um, we have variance analysis, so it allows your clients to do flux analysis, you know, and analyze fluctuations in balance sheets and P&L balances. And then finally, our task management solution. It's, it's an electronic checklist. So what 
most clients are doing, whether it's a closed checklist, PBC list, COSO framework socks, whatever it is, but when it comes to a closed checklist, most of them are going to be doing it in Excel. So what, we do, what we've done is this is an electronic checklist that everyone gets access to. So the, again, that's just the visibility portion where people know where the account rec is in the process, whether it's in the approver's hand or in the reviewer's hands, et cetera. Um, and when it comes to our mid-market um, organizations, what a lot of clients are, are utilizing are, is our account reconciliation solution, our task management, and then our matching solution. Because again, whether it's thousands of transactions, um, these smaller, uh, you know, mid-market organizations, they're, they might be throwing half of a person's headcount to managing these and, and doing that ticking and tying within Excel. So that's where technology can, can certainly help. And then um, as you can see here our kind of our solution set. So just keep in mind our reconciliation management solution. It's it's really it's a complete reconciliation solution from the transaction level to the account balance level to consolidated numbers. So um, your clients can be sure that the numbers you're reporting are reconciled in an automated fashion from the lowest level to the top. So you can see here our solution set. Really, I don't want to say it's marketing, but it's it's how we bundle essentially at the end of the day how we bundle our our products. Um, we have our financial close management solution, which basically entails all of these seven different products and it just builds upon the reconciliation management and allows the clients to completely transform their close process. We do have something called intercompany hub. So this is, this came out um, about eight or nine months ago. It's our first cloud based, um, it's the first cloud based intercompany clearinghouse. So really it's something uh, is big for our enterprise organization, but um, from speaking to our partners and, and clients in the mid market, um, a lot of them have, you know, have acquired different organizations and, and intercompany transactions is a huge pain point. So really what it does, it helps clients achieve uh, the streamlined process around intercompany accounting by addressing really discrepancies on the front end of a transaction, houses the agreements, and then eliminates that manual after the fact reconciliation. So um, it is a, it's a really a big solution um, for both the mid-market and, and enterprise space. Um, and then finally, we have another solution. It's called Blackline Insight. So what it essentially does, it provides real-time uh, benchmarking and analysis and empowers finance leaders to really continually to improve period end and accounting processes. What it does, it allows clients to analyze how their accounting team performs compared to specific benchmarks. So they can look at how they're performing against other organizations, um, their size um, in their vertical. Um, so it's, uh, it's a nice little benchmarking tool that our clients get access to um, to continually improve their, their close and account reconciliation process. So those, again, those are all our different product sets. I know this was just a quick overview of it, um, but hopefully that gave you a, a, a little snippet of, of, um, of organization. So this is really the seven reasons, you know, Blackline helps you, the reseller, build a more str a stronger, more profitable business. So reason number one, is really more revenue and less competition. So, you know, we have an example of, of eBay. You know, they're using Blackline to manage thousands of their account recs and journal entries across 100 different entities and 10,000 GL accounts. By using Blackline account recs, our journal entry and task management solution, they were able to cut their close from 10 days um, each month down to three days. So that's a 70% reduction in, in the process of reduced risk and really reducing risk in the process. So again, um, 50, as you saw before, 55% uh, companies are still reconciling manually. So there's really a um, there's a big revenue play at there, uh, you know, at play for uh, for you, the reseller. Um, reason number two is customers of every size uh, from every industry. So, you know, like death and taxes, the close doesn't discriminate. You know, well that's you know that's bad news for you know, those finance teams were still relying on spreadsheets and scanners. It's really great news for you, the reseller. The need is there. I mean, at the end of the day, the need is there. Um, we're selling to a large number of clients. You can see here 40%, 46% of our black line clients are mid-sized companies. So we came from the enterprise space, um, but three years ago, we built out our mid-market um, team. And, and so before we had 5% of our client base three years ago were in the mid-market. So of our 1,400 clients, almost 700 of them are now mid-market, and that's over the last three years. So that's where our biggest logo um, and revenue is really coming from. Um, so again, the, the customers are there, 
you know, you can offer Blackline technology and consulting services to every existing customer that you manage. You know, everybody wants to get access to that, but every CFO knows that, you know, to stay competitive today requires real-time business intelligence, um, you know, on-demand insight into those hard numbers. So they also know there's a big problem with the way that they're closing their books. So these manual accounting processes not only affect productivity, but increase that risk of errors, that decrease visibility, and, and ensure CFOs have little time to spend on forecasting and analysis. So you can go to the CFO um, and have a new conversation that I'm guessing you're not having today uh, around the close process and finance financial uh, transformation, really financial just optimization of their of their team. Reason number four is really this powerful partner support. So you as the reseller, you don't have time. We understand. You probably, I'm sure an ISV, talk, you know, tries to reach out to you every day. You don't have time to develop new materials, train staff to create and campaign to resell more products and services. But with Blackline, you don't have to go in it alone. So as, as a Blackline partner, you have access to our training and support as well as our ongoing enablement. Um, so keep in mind, we've actually built out our channel partner outside of the U.S. and, and North America um, a couple of years ago. Um, so we do have a, a, um, a strong partner program and enablement program already developed that we're using and we have actually used over the last uh, year or so as we're bringing on uh, partners within North America, you know, like an RSM or in this case, uh, a PASV and Unity. So we deliver, we also deliver marketing assistance. So we have collateral, demand generation tr um, strategies, templates, and technical help. So we also keep you, your new customers happy by offering them ongoing software improvements and forums to provide, you know, input into new features and capabilities. So at the end of the day, we have this partner support. We already have this partner program in place that has been successful um, outside of North America and has been successful within North America over the last, you know, six to nine months. Um, reason number five is that continuous revenue stream. So we understand, you know, today's business environment is so complex and, and technology is moving at this pace that companies are slow to evolve. So this is where they need you, the, the reseller, to help them not only identify the right technologies that will move um, their businesses forward, but also them get them to adopt, to optimize, and to see results with these new technologies. So that's where you come in. You know, many of our partners are helping our clients to get more out of, use out of Blackline with their custom, you know, customized services. And as a result, our partners, you know, are not only receiving upfront revenue and annuity streams, but they're also realizing revenue through services centered around both Blacklines platform, but also around really financial close optimization as well. So there is that continuous revenue streams, which um, won't go into too much detail today, but um, with our with our reseller pro, um, program as well. Reason number six is really uh, our cloud-based technology is designed to work with any ERP. So um, just keep in mind we are ERP agnostic. So we've worked with you know, the SAPs of the world that we work with, you know, we have 150 uh, plus Microsoft Dynamic clients, you know, 100 plus NetSuite clients. We work with Sage organizations as well, Epicor, Infor, kind of go go across the line and, and we've essentially worked with it. So like any business, they are, you know, your, your customers don't have time to, for this disruption. So that's really a barrier to any sale. So that's where we enter Blackline. So you can give your clients automated reconciliation, matching task management capabilities, really with little to no disruption to their existing ERP. So Blackline, we work seamlessly with any ERP importing and then exporting data without any macros, with any, you know, really without any burdening IT or interfe interfering with uh, existing account processes. So, you know, it could be as little as, um, you know, a, a 20, 20 hour implementation, but that's when, again, that's when your team comes in and helps um, not only implement or install Blackline, but really implement and put processes and financial close automation um, around, you know, with, with your clients. So that's where there's a lot of um, um, additional revenue to be had around the services side. And then lastly, kind of reason number seven is really a true partnership with a company that is in high demand. So. You know, Blackline is looking for strategic partners to grow with us that have an office of finance and finance transformation expertise. Expertise. So our goal is to grow, uh, and we've had, so we've had nine straight years, as you can see here, of 50% year-over-year growth. 
um, and we're at we hit over 100 million in annual sales um, in 2015. Um, our goal is to grow 50% again this year, um, and so we want to be to be at least 150 million in revenues, and and we want to grow to you know over 500 million over the next you know five years. So we know to we have to work with with you guys, with with the resellers that are really the consultant to the client. So we we need partners. We really need partners to to grow, and so we're looking for these strategic partners to to grow with us. So those are our you know seven reasons um, from a partnership standpoint. I did want to mention kind of why Blackline, you know, for, for as well some other uh, details about our organization and our, and our product. Um, really, the power of one. So our Blackline technology platform. So we have one code line. So one code line means there's no custom one-off, which increases uh, really the innovation, simplifies support, and speeds um, really the updates for all of our customers. So Blackline delivers, just so everyone's aware, four major product releases a year. Um, you know, delivers features, functionality, and updates without version requirements or painful service back. So things like our intercompany hub and our Blackline Insights that just came out over the last nine months, and those were major product releases. Um, we have really the Blackline Unified Cloud Platform. So we have one comprehensive system that acts like one product, and it's the very, it's really the best way to deliver and measure the impact of increasing efficiencies and controls across the client's finance and accounting department. So with four major product releases in one year, there's high high availability uptime, a secure data model. Blackline's uh, Unified cl model makes sense delivering lowest total cost of ownership and really the high highest adoption rates, which we'll go into. Um, and I did mention this before, but just again to reiterate, we you know we are the first, the largest, and fastest growing provider of financial close automation software. What uh, Gartner uh, refers to EFCA is EFCA. It's enhanced financial cl cl uh, close and automation um, uh, in in the marketplace. So we're the fastest growing software company in the world when it comes to EFCA with unrivaled growth and then really high customer satisfaction. So. Our momentum you see here in expertise is, is really mar is uh, in the market is proven by the numbers. So we've had 50% revenue growth over the last nine years. We now have 1,400 clients, 130,000 users um, in over 100 countries, um, and black using Blackline to close their books. So really large growth, um, and, and obviously we're continuing to grow. And then just to reiterate, so we are considered the market leader, so it's just not me stating this. <laughs> you know, Gartner's recognized us as as the leader when it comes to um, EFCA, um, as well as some other um, organizations that mention the same thing. Um, and one thing to note, so this is really a proof point. So our net, I'm sure folks know net promoter score, our net promoter score is, is 78%, which is huge when it comes to, uh, when it comes to the net promoter score, um, you know, Apple's, uh, just just at 70 percent um, and again when it comes to um, EFCA we are the the, the um, um, you know really the, the the most the largest annual renewal rate um, for, for our clients so we have a 98 percent annual renewal rate as you can see here and then one thing to note too is 74 percent of our clients um, get an increased footprint so you saw before our products you know but a lot of our clients they might just start with account recs um, but once they get that going and, and are happy with that solution um, they'll move into our other solution set so really um, we do have a lot of clients that crawl walk run uh, approach to to using blackline which is which is perfect for us and and um, and obviously we're gonna they're gonna stay on blackline for uh, for a number of years so that's just a, so a little bit of proof points around around uh, around blackline I do want to mention you know this is just a partial list um, of our mid-market companies that we work with globally so um, you know we are ERP agnostic, but we're also vertical agnostic. Um, there's certainly organizations or verticals that might have higher volume transactions that may be a good fit, but at the end of the day, every organization has to do account reconciliations. Um, so every organization is really a good, a good fit for our product. And as I mentioned before, ERP agnostic. So um, work with, you know, I know there's companies um, on this WebEx that are, 
you know, have clients that are running Sage or Microsoft or NetSuite or Epicor or Info or whatever it would be, um, really work with all of those. And we have clients, happy clients, referenceable clients um, for all of those uh, all of those products. I did want to mention though that uh, you know we do have a lot of clients. And when we're talking about resellers, a lot of the partners are going to be reselling whether it's Sage or Dynamics or NetSuite, right? I mean, I see those as the, as the big ones when we're talking about reselling. Um, so we do we have uh, we have lots of clients that are um, again referenceable cu customers that are Great Plains, that are NAV, that are AX, and even um, SL. Even though Microsoft's trying to push everybody to GP and AX, but uh, we do have SL clients as well. Um, we have a we have a uh, connector um, for Netsuite. Um, when it comes to the account reconciliation process, uh, process, and here's just uh, some of our clients that are that are Netsuite clients, and we were just at Suite World, so I had a lot of um, interested organizations um, that are going to be running Blackline for Netsuite very, very soon. So, um, and again, I'm mentioning this because we know a lot of the resellers that are on the call um, are going to be reselling. You know, uh, NetSuite, Microsoft, Sage, and some some other products, whether it's Acumatica or Intact, all those all those other ones. I did want to mention, I you saw this in their product set, but just to keep in mind, Blackline is the only ISO 27001 certified financial close platform. Um, you know, at the end of the day. Um, you know our clients asked for this, and we had to we had to do this. So really, from a security standpoint, there is no issues when it when it comes to that. And if you have any questions, please let me know, and I can give you more details. Um, and then just realizing the the benefits. I don't know if I have to mention this. I mean, you know, moving to the cloud versus on premise. But you know, as you know, cloud delivery is, is simply just much more efficient than on premises. On premise or hosted solution when it comes to delivery. So a study by uh, Bain found that cloud applications are faster to implement, to test, to deploy, and of course, just that ongoing maintenance is, is less too. So um, that's where again Blackline comes in. And I know some of your partners on the call here, you know, might be reselling solutions that are that are um, um, on premise. Um, but just keep in mind, you can build out your your cloud business. Maybe you're not selling a cloud ERP, but you can start with a um, you know, with a black line type of solution that, and so you're slowly moving your revenue stream uh, to the cloud as well, which is, that's where that, you know, annuity obviously comes into play. So when it comes to kind of market opportunity, you know, um, I talked about, you know, our black line, our fit, um, who are we selling to? Hopefully, you know, as I've been doing this presentation, um, you can understand, obviously we're selling to, you know, most of the time who we're focusing on is definitely on the left, the, the corporate finance, budget, tax, and treasury. Um, the CFO, you know, what's their main, what's their main value driver is really around improved controls and reducing risk. But the key folks I'd also say is really on the right hand side is the controller and then the general accounting team. They're going to be living into this, right? They're going to be the ones you know, the accounting folks are going to be doing the grunt work, so they're going to know kind of the pain um, of their of the close. So those are the best persons to talk to as you're asking the questions, you know, how long does it take you to do the close and how long does it take you to do the account reconciliation process? And they can give you a lot of details of, as well. Um, I don't think I'm saying anything new here, but um, and then just our typical customer profile. I did want to mention this to everybody on the call. You know, who do we work with, right? I mean, um, obviously, we've been a good fit for, for the enterprise space, but we have been, as you saw before, 47%, almost 50% of our client base is now um, in the mid-market space. And what we say is from, you know, 20, uh, you know, in this case, you know, 10 million upwards um, to 500 million, but nearly all of your customers are, are reconciling their balance sheet accounts today using spreadsheets. You know, they might not be printing it out, they might be storing it on a shared drive, but again, there's no visibility in the process. Um, you know, there's no efficiencies around the process. And from a company standpoint, you know, I would say uh, 10 million in turnover, you know, I would say 20 to 30 million in turnover uh, as well. Um, when it, they, have, they have to have at least one qualified accountant. Um, if financial governance is a priority, you know, um, if they're if they're planning to go, maybe they're a private company because really they they a lot of these private organizations they adhere to SOCs, 
um, but if there's organizations that are planning to go public or planning to get acquired, um, they are definitely good fits uh, for Blackline as well because well, they need to enforce controls. If there's organizations that have, whether it's multiple ERP systems, multiple entities, if they're in different countries, if they're multiple locations, again, they need visibility around the close, they're a good fit. Um, subsidiaries of larger organizations, definitely good fits for, for Blackline. High transaction volumes, and that's... Um, you know, that's, it could be thousands of transactions. You know, we worked with this NetSuite client where 40% of this accountant's time was doing credit card reconciliations. And this is like a $10 million NetSuite organization, but 40% of this person's time, you know, you can figure out, you know, how much that costs. And when that person left, when that accountant person left, you know, they were looking, should we just hire another person where half their time was doing credit card reconciliations or should we use technology um, to automate this process? So I think that's where you're definitely going to come into to come into play when you're talking to clients. Um, and then companies growing. You know, if they're growing or planning to expand, they're definitely good fits um, for Blackline. And I did want to mention, so, you know our 2016 channel footprint. We already do work with a with a number of, of partners um, in uh, in North America. We have 36 partners, I, and when I say partners, 36 resellers um, globally. Um, we do have over 500 partners. You know the the big fours. You know these um, services consulting partners that really help Blackline around. Uh, you know consulting, and and we have affiliate partners and referral partners as well. But these are 36 channel partners that we work with um, globally, and you can see we're starting to expand that within um, uh, within North America. So what is the partner opportunity? You know, and uh, again, this is my, I don't like over sliding folks to death, but I think that I knew I was going to be uh, showing a lot of slides today, but hopefully this is, gives you a, a good overview around Blackline. But what is the opportunity for you, you know, for the reseller? Well, at the end of the day, so Blackline solves a widespread problem that's, that's happening, um, you know, that your clients are um, in the weeds um, today. Um, the financial close processes, as you saw here today, and this is not from, you know, Blackline studies this is from you know FERF and, and Gardner and Ventana research is it's done manual you know uh, over 55 percent of, of uh, mid-market organizations are doing the financial close process manually um, and then I think the partner opportunity for you is this cloud adoption obviously reduces total cost of ownership well kind of increase in scalability when it comes to financial close process you're going to be talking to them about something new um, we are from our standpoint, I mean, obviously on the line here are folks that have Sage clients or, you know, Microsoft clients, but we are ERP agnostic. So you might have organizations that might be running, you know, Dynamics, but they might have another ERP as well. We are ERP agnostics and, and you can go uh, to market that way. Um, we want to be able to, the opportunity is this leveraging your local expertise, you know, and this leveraging your expertise and your consultative nature to uh, to your client base, you know, that probably wouldn't know about Blackline otherwise. Um, new conversations to the CFO level, you know, you're always trying to find something new. This is something new, you know, that you can actually go to them with and introduce them and educate them around around um, optimizing the, the the close process. And it's not just technology; it's really um, those value added services you can do around the close and optimization. Um, you know, new revenue stream. I mean, at the end of the day, you know, for resellers, you're looking at building your annuity and reoccurring revenue. So we do have a channel program uh, for folks that are interested um, where you can get that annuity um, and build build your black line business and really build your black line book of business uh, very quickly. Um, it's a complementary offering. So at the end of the day, we're not competing with your ERP. We're not competing if you have a, you know, a BI portfolio, if you're reselling, a, you know, adaptive or host or something like that. Really, it's a complementary offering um, to what you already have within your portfolio. And then it's just that, yeah, at the end of the day, it's a value to your install base. You know, you're, you're, you're providing a solution to a pain point that you may not know um, exists, you know, um, and I think that's a, you know, that's a question that you're going to want to, after this call, hopefully talk to some of your, you know, your top five clients and just find out whether account reconciliations, reconciliations in general is, is an issue for, uh, for your client base. So those are the, are, you know, some of the opportunities. This is just, uh, again, uh, an overview of, of Blackline. Um, as well as 
you know, why it's, you know, why we've been growing, you know, really exponentially and why we're looking to, to build out our, our partner channel specifically within North America, specifically um, for our mid market, um, which we're excited to do. So with that, I think that, that was, that was it. I mean, at, at the end of the day, I think we're right at the 45 minute mark. So just on time for, for, uh, for Q and a, again, if you have any other questions, you can certainly, you know, visit blackline.com slash partners. You can reach out to, to myself as well, uh, david.stewart at blackline.com. But before we go into that, maybe I'll, I'll pass it over back to you, Adriana, and we can open up for Q&A. Thank you so much, David. That was a great presentation. Um, I see that most of these partners on the line are in North America. And uh, would they be working specifically with you? <clears throat> on onboarding and can you maybe review for us the onboarding process? Yeah, so I am one, we have a couple of, so I'm one of, and there's another, uh, ch I'm a channel partner manager, so I'm for, for the mid-market. We have another channel partner manager based in Minnesota um, that um, that works and recruits uh, our different partners. So it would be one of us. Uh, we do have a VP of global uh, partnerships. Her name's Kim DePaulo that helps around the programs and, and, and uh, getting all the, you know, the, the content and uh, legal stuff out of the way. Um, but from when it comes from an enablement standpoint, you'd be working with me. So we have a, uh, we have a 90 day program that we work with our partners so they can get enabled to, sell black line to um, demo black line to implement black line we understand it's not going to you know it's not going to be overnight you know we're not expecting okay great we brought you on as a channel partner go ahead um, we're able to let the great news is this year um, we're able to leverage our sales team um, you know do, we do have a direct sales uh, organization um, in North America but we can leverage their team um, and so in that territory they're basically able to um, you can mirror us at the end of the day. You can mirror us on the first few. Um, as we know, we're not going to be able to sell it kind of overnight. So, and they actually get commission credit. So they're incented to help, um, you know, and, and position Blackline um, when we're working with channel partners. So I can get into more detail, whoever has that, you know, ask that question. Um, and I can send you our kind of enablement guide um, on how we, um, you know, enable partners. And we know that's the, you know, obviously that's a big part of it, right? Is getting, um, getting you um, being able to basically resell Blackline and, and manage the whole cost of sale, but we know it's not going to, it's not going to happen overnight. So we have a good program in place. And I do have a poll <clears throat> up for the audience. If you could just take a second to answer that poll, that'll be helpful. Thank you so much. Uh, and I do want to remind the audience that there is a question mark and a hand next to your name on the webinar pane. If you should have any questions, please go ahead and click on that question mark button and we will announce the question for David to answer. Now, David, uh, do you help with marketing the Blackline solution to the existing partners uh, customer base, maybe through webinars or uh, maybe through blogging on the partner's website. How do you help the partner attract new Black Nine business? Or are you, um, you know, is it a pull from the yeah. partner primarily or kind of, you know, mm -hmm. uh, a partnership in bringing on opportunities? Yeah, it's definitely a partnership to bring in opportunities. So um, as part of that 90-day enablement, um, we get you introduced to our – we have a marketing manager, partner marketing manager that manages just the channel. So you can leverage – I mean, we have – a bunch of collateral, you know, and we have a big marketing team, um, which is great. So if so many, you know, we have so much resources that, that your team can leverage. Um, but we definitely, you would, uh, we would put together really a kind of a sales and marketing uh, um, plan together over the first 30, 60, 90 days, just to educate your client base. So um, we can, we can build that out or we already have that built out. Um, and we can, um, we can just basically work with, with Brian McKenzie, our partner marketing manager and myself, um, to put that strategy together and whether it's webinars, I mean, obviously, you know, webinars is great, but if we can do, um, kind of an onsite or, or if we can do a, uh, you know, set up, set it up at one specific location, that would be great. Some type of networking event. We have something called our event in a box where, um, we have templates to build out, um, and we can, and we can leverage our director of financial transformation that could speak at one of these events and, um, leverage our customers, et cetera. So, um, yeah, we can, 
the good news is again we have a, a marketing program um, and a go-to-market that we, that we can um, that we can leverage already that we're doing with some of our other partners um, today. And I'm going to go ahead and close out this poll in a couple moments here. I see that 57% of you have voted. If we could get that number a little bit higher, that would be awesome. Um, and let me look and see if we have any other questions. Okay, and how did you say that this integrated with the ERP software, David? Uh, I didn't. So, um, yeah, I can mention this. So, um, we we built out some, so just so you know, we built out some connectors with some ERPs like SAP, like NetSuite, what, like GP, um, which actually is a is an avenue for like actually an additional revenue stream potentially. So if you want to, we want to work together on building a connector to let's say Sage 300 or Sage 100 or, or AX for example. But from the client's perspective, it's really, if we don't have this connector and I don't want to get kind of sidetracked, if we don't have a connector because we don't for most, for most ERPs, it really is a simple integration process. So we send a query to the ERP or any other data and it's just, really a simple secure file transfer job. So the secure FTP site is black lines. The, the client pushes their, um, and we have a template that we ask the client, and they basically push their GL balance, their GL detail, whatever data source they choose to this FTP server. And then this can be done, whether it's manually, you know, automated, it can be scheduled or, or both. And then from there, black line, we pick up the information and then pull it into the client's uh, black line instance on a schedule for their choosing. So it's really kind of this structured in this way. It's a kind of as part of a security measure. So we're not reaching into the client's ERP system. We only receive what the client tells black line to receive. So um, that gives, again, um, highlight on kind of how we integrate. Um, if, if you have some more kind of detailed questions around that, we can certainly, I can bring in one of our technical resources to talk about it. And David, that brings us to this next poll here. How important is it to gain access to the CFO when selling your solutions? I would think, you know, just based on my experience, that this type of a solution would um, attract the CFO's interest and, in, you know, maybe even any content that you're writing for your website um, or in, you know, presenting a solution that will offer ROI that is obvious yeah. to a CFO type. Can you maybe help us? understand yeah. how this helps us gain access to the CFO? Yeah, yeah, I think it would, especially in the mid-market, right? So I think if we're talking to the enterprise clients, getting access to the CFO is a little more difficult, but I think when we're talking about the clients that are under 500 million, the people that we're talking to um, and discussing Blackline to is definitely the CFO, the controller. You know, we definitely, when we have discovery calls, um, we actually like to have a discovery call with the kind of the accounting manager or even the accounts because they're the ones that know that, you know, they're, they're in, again, they're kind of in the pain. So they know what the, you know, the CFO is not going to know in general. They're not going to know kind of the account rec process and how long does it take and, you know, um, the, the accounting managers and, and probably the controllers are kind of the, the ones um, um, that we talk to. But, yeah, I think um, that's definitely – you know, having that message to the CFO, um, this this is the this is a product, this is a solution where you're able to have that um, strategic conversation with the CFO that that you may not be having with with other product sets. And I would just like to bring it to the audience's attention that you can select more than one here. Uh, so if you can, if you are interested in seeing a demo of Blackline, I just wanted to clarify that you can select that uh, last check mark there um, and let us know that you're interested in seeing a demonstration of Blackline. And we kind of uh, went over the company and all the uh, attributes of Blackline, but we did not go through a demonstration. And David would love the opportunity to show you Blackline in detail. So if you do have an interest in seeing a demo, please go ahead and click on that uh, fourth check mark there. So yeah, and the good news is it wouldn't it wouldn't be it wouldn't be me doing the demo. That's that's the good news. First off, a lot of our solutions consultants that you know essentially demonstrate Blackline um, are either ex Blackliners or um, have a CPA, you know, or, or accountants by trade. So um, they're the perfect um, you know person or people to 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 demonstrate the solution because they have you know real world use cases when they're when they're showing the product and they they know. Really, the pain point that 
you know, really I didn't know before joining Blackline. I'm sure folks on the call, you know, really just, you know, you don't know what the pain that these accounts are having when it comes to the close and when it comes to the account reconciliation process. So I'm going to go ahead and close out that poll, and then I have one more poll, and I'm not seeing any other questions at this time. So are you seeking to add new cloud solutions to your ERP portfolio? So if we could just ask the audience to answer one more question, that would be terrific. And we have three minutes to spare. Good job, Dave. Great presentation. Oh, yeah, perfect. And again, I have here, if you have any questions, visit you know, blackline.com slash partners. You can email myself, and I know the question that came up earlier, um, There, I have an, a counterpart by the name of, and maybe some of you have already heard of, Aaron McGrain is uh, my counterpart that, that also manages some of the partners. So you, if you've already maybe talked to her, feel free to reach out to her as well, aaron.mcgrain at blackline.com. And we did record this webinar, uh, and we will be sending a follow-up email with a recording, if that's okay, Dave, and uh, so that uh, anyone who registered for this webinar but maybe not, couldn't attend or maybe you did attend and didn't see the entire thing, you will be getting a, a link with the recording at the end of the presentation. And with that, uh, and, you got, and anyone can respond um, to me. It will be coming from Adrian at ERPVAR.com, and I can go ahead and forward on any requests, any additional information for Dave uh, that you seek. So we'll be in touch with that. And I see 67% of the attendance, attendees have voted. And I'm going to leave this up for another couple moments since we do have two minutes left. And David, did you have any um, closing remarks that you wanted to add? Uh, no, no, I definitely, I know an hour out of everyone's time is, is very valuable, so definitely appreciate everybody joining in. And um, if there's interest, please uh, feel free to reach out to me and look forward to talking to all of you. And I will include your in, uh, contact information in that follow-up email too, so. People can reach out that way as well. And thank you, everybody, again for joining us. And enjoy the rest of your day. Take care. Bye-bye.